Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks, and this is the Tech Travel Geeks setup video for the Google Pixel 7a. If you haven't already, you can watch our unboxing of the Google Pixel 7a here on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel, and make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell on to be notified when we publish any of our other videos. Right then, so we've unboxed the device, I have my SIM card here with the SIM ejector tool, and we're ready to find out where to put that. Now if you're looking at the back of your device, on the right hand side you'll see that the SIM tray is there, and you have your SIM ejector tool ready to poke that tray out. Now the Google Pixel 7a is a dual SIM device, but physically it only takes one nano SIM, such as the one I'm putting into the device now. Now that slots in nicely, and the way it becomes a dual SIM device is the fact that it also supports eSIMs, so you can use an eSIM as well as the physical SIM card in the device. This is particularly useful for when you're traveling and you want to avoid roaming charges. Anyway, I'm restarting the device now, it was already on. Let's go through things from the beginning. We've got the Google logo, and it's obviously powered by Android. And we're immediately welcome to the Pixel. I'm in the UK, everything's as expected. Now all we have to do is connect to my Wi-Fi network. So here we go. It's searching for local Wi-Fi networks. We can see the SIM card is connecting as well. There we go. It's got local Wi-Fi networks. I'll just need to enter my password now. Okay then, so that was pretty quick and painless, and now the Pixel 7a is getting ready. Now, interesting thing, the haptic feedback on the keyboard was very pleasant to use here, really good f haptic feedback, and it feels ergonomically very good to type on. So just as with the Google Pixel 6a, it's a great device in its first impressions. Now we're being offered the option to copy apps and data. I don't want to do this. I want to set the Google Pixel 7a up as a brand new device. And that's how we're going. Now, as you can see, the coral color on the back of the Google Pixel 7a is matched by the theme here. And now I'm going to plug in my Google account credentials. There we go, that was pretty painless. Uh, and pleasant keyboard experience. Now I just need to enable the two-step verification from another device, and I just happen to he have my Pixel 6a here. That's it, done. I've clicked on the authorization, and we can move on. So this was the Google Pixel 6a I was using, and now we have the option given to us by Google on who will be using this device? Will it be me, or will I have a child uh, using it? In this case, it will be me, but it's good to see Google upping their parental controls game. Now, in Google We Trust, we agree to all the terms and conditions. Now, it's getting all the data from my Google account onto the device. And as I said earlier, in Google we trust, we accept everything. There is apparently a limited warranty for the device, and in this case, this is for the United Kingdom. So there you go. Uh, I'm sure I'm reading through this at high speed or not. Now we need to set up a PIN. This will be between four or six digits. And there we go. Now that we have a PIN set up, we also can go ahead and set up the fingerprint scanner. Now, the Google Pixel 7a has uh, an underscreen fingerprint scanner, and I just need to tap my thumb in this case multiple times on the part of the screen where the sensor is for it to recognize my fingerprint and, and map it for future, future use. And that's it done. It's relatively fast. Great. In, in future, I can always add another, but for now, we'll stick with the one thumb that I've set up. And next up, we'll set up Face Unlock. So let's click the Agree button. 
And now I need to hold the phone at eye level. This is going to be a bit of a challenge with the camera. I'll also need to move my head. Uh, Google have upped their facial recognition software through the camera to enable what is essentially phase detection uh, for the, the face. Now, the camera's in the way. Just bear with me a moment whilst I do this at my actual eye level. And there we go, that was relatively easy, just had to move my head around a bit. Right, so we've set up face unlock, what's next? Now it's saying that we need to continue setup. Google Assistant, we need to give it some quick phrases to recognize my voice. This is an updated experience, and we need to use some phrases. So let's see how this works out. So first up, OK, Google, what's the weather tomorrow? OK, Google, remind me to water my plants every Monday. Hey, Google, make a call. Hey, Google, set a timer for five minutes. And there we go, that's... Uh, Assistant set up, and now I'm going to agree to the fact that I want to be able to use Assistant uh, with the lock screen turned on. Uh, so I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead. Now, next up, uh, we have the option to add another few things, but I'm going to say no thanks to that. I can do that at a later point if I wish to, but that's it. But I do want to sign up for the newsletter, giving me tips and tricks in my inbox. Obviously, if you don't already, you can also subscribe to J.R. Raphael's Android's uh, newsletter. It's full of great, I, great things, uh, great tips and tricks on how to use Android and Google Apps. In particular, the, his recent series on all about Android, about the YouTube app, is great. Now, next up quick uh, notification, quick tutorial on gesture navigation. I'm fine with that, but that's essentially the basic setup completed. What we need to do now is uh, go ahead and go into the device and make sure that we have all the latest updates through the Google Play Store for apps and services. Now, as you can see, we have a fairly clean launcher on the Google Pixel 7a. It's a nice simple one and it's suggesting we push up into the app drawer. And as you can see there aren't that many pre-installed apps. They're all very, very uh, Google ones and that's it. There's not much else there. So we're in the Play Store. There's already some apps updating as we can see and there's 46 updates available. So we're going to need to leave the the device doing this in the background for a while and the Google Play Store app itself will likely need to re be restarted a couple of times as its own updates are installed and as you can see amongst the apps the Google voice recorder which is very very useful it does do transcriptions as well it's a great app and a one of the selling points of the Google Pixel series of devices. It's definitely one of the reasons I purchased the Google Pixel 7a. Now, as the apps update in the background, uh, we're seeing that performance hasn't really been affected that much. Uh, it is still updating stuff in the background. Let's have a look at how we're getting on. Now, all the apps seem to have updated the ones which had already started. Now, the Play Store is restarting. Let's move into the Play Store. Now that it's restarted and updated itself, let's update those 46 apps. And testament to the Google Tensor 2 chip in the Google Pixel 7a, uh, there doesn't seem to be much in terms of slowdowns on the device in the use of the Pixel 7a whilst all these updates are happening in the background. So whilst we're at it, let's go into the Google Play Store and have a look for some other apps to add to it. But first, let's 
go back into the Play Store. No slowdowns there. Let's search for my most used apps. Obviously for messaging, there's Telegram, one of my preferred messaging apps. There is also, in this case, Messenger by Facebook, or I should say Meta now. So, Messenger by Meta. And in terms of messaging, that should do. Apart from Google Chats, now, it may be a surprise to many, but it is still a good messaging service, and I still have quite a few friends using Google Chat. It is the evol evolution of Google Hangouts. Right then, so we've got chat apps done. Let's see what other suggestions we get from uh, the Play Store. Obviously, I'm going to use Meta's Facebook and Instagram, those, uh, those evil apps of social media. Obviously, Netflix for streaming video. Um, and whilst we're at it, I'm also going to install another few apps. Let's have a look. Uh, Amazon Prime Video, definitely one I will be using. A few, goods, a few goods TV shows there to catch up on. Obviously, the Amazon Shopping app, which I, I love. Amazon OneDrive, yes, I do have a Microsoft account, and I do use OneDrive quite a lot, as well as Outlook for my Outlook email. Amazon Music, decent service. Next up, lots of decent suggestions, but obviously the most important one to me is Audible. Audible, and whilst we're at it, uh, my Pocket Cast or Podcast app of choice. So, whilst that downloads and installs, let's see what else it's suggesting. Google Podcasts. It works, but I do prefer Pocket Casts. Right, so whilst all these apps are happening in the background, let's see what else there is. Threes. A bit of light gaming on the Google Pixel 7a. It's, I think it's been 10 years that I've been playing Threes at this point. And there are quite a few other games there. Okay, great. So, as you can see, all the apps have been added to the home screen. They're greyed out if the installation hasn't completed yet. So, what I'm going to do now is drag Messenger Messages up, that's the SMS app from Google, then drop Telegram into it. It's already intelligently understood that these are chat apps. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to take Messenger and put it in the same place. And then pop that folder into my... Uh, dock at the bottom of the screen. Next up, we're going to take the social media app, so Facebook, Instagram, and drop that down in there. And whilst we're at it, we'll sort out some of the other apps that we've put there. Uh, let's have a look first at video. So we've got... Oh, no, let's do audio. So we've got Pocket Casts and then Audible into one folder. And let's pop the video ones into another. So we've got movies. Put chat into the messaging folder. And YouTube. So let's pop that one in as well. So I'll just drag the movies folder over and pop YouTube in there. Obviously I'm a YouTube premium subscriber. Great for travel if you can download content to watch whilst offline very cool feature. And that's pretty much it in terms of what I was planning on doing in terms of a setup. I've got the key apps. I'll obviously need to use two-factor authentication to log into many of these services and apps. But uh, overall, the experience has been really quite positive. The Google Pixel 7a hasn't dropped a beat, as far as I can see. The screen was nice and responsive. Uh, and in my view, nothing wrong with it. It is uh, by default on with, in this case, 60 hertz, the standard setting. If you want to have a buttery, smooth, faster refresh rate screen, you can do so. And uh, that will impact battery life. But I can feel no heat on the back of the device, despite all the pretty intensive uh, intensive processes going on in the background. The plastic back of the device seem is cool to the touch, as is the metal structure, and the screen is nice and bright. 
very, very legible. Let's see how the app installations are going at the moment. There we go. So 16 updates in process, in, in progress in the background. Let's have a look at those screen settings. So I'm going to go into the settings menu. We'll scroll down to display. And in display, I'll go and select, in this case, smooth display. So it automatically raises the refresh rate from 60 to 90 hertz for some content, increases battery usage. So I'm not too bothered. 60 hertz is more than enough for me. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. So let's leave that as it is for now. But we can, uh, at a later point, do a video on how to change those settings if you would find that useful. Do let us in the co know in the comment section below if that's something you would find useful. Anyway, apart from that, I think this has been a good overall experience in terms of setups. It's fairly straightforward. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We cover consumer electronics, gadgets, accessories, and pretty much anything we think makes the travel experience better. And in terms of this Coral Google Pixel 7a, make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell on for not only how-to videos, a comparison with the Google Pixel 6a, and all the accessories we'll be covering for the Google Pixel 7a. We have a nice lineup of cases by Tuthia for the device. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, thanks for watching this far, and we will speak to you soon. Thanks, goodbye.